Welcome to Radflix 1989. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe, Joe Opinionated. Opinion. What are Radflix? Radflix are movies that have stood the test of time. Today we're certifying them rad. Our panel of six normal people, normal Canadians, have voted in categories comedy, drama, horror, action, sci fi, most watched, raddest movie overall. We got you covered. Family movie night. And we're certifying these movies rad. We started in 19. 1980, we're at 1989, the last year of the 80s. Just sick of all the, the lists out there, the things that were certified as, you know, the best movie of the year back in 1989. Well, they never had to stand the test of time. Now they have Best Picture in 1989, went to the movie Driving Miss Daisy. Best Director, Oliver Stone for Born on the Fourth of July. Best Actor, Daniel Day-Lewis for My Left Foot. Best Actress, Jessica Tandy for Driving Miss Daisy. So 1989, we're on season two of one of my favorite shows shows growing up the wonder years so the first season was just a limited i think it was six episodes season two is a full season wrestlemania we're up to wrestlemania five now the mega powers explode this is a hogan and macho man fighting for the title rowdy piper comes back for piper's pit jimmy snuka makes a return it's the second one at trump plaza ice cube leaves nwa the central park five that's when that happens it's when uh trump pulls out an ad to convict these five people of doing a crime they didn't end up ultimately committing. Sergio Leone, incredible director, one of the greatest of all time, passes away at age 60. Game Boy debuts. Got a Game Boy in here. Say by the Bell debuts. It was a bad year for communism. Czechoslovakia and Romania, both of them. And The Simpsons debut on Fox. Legends that passed away in 1989 include Lawrence Olivier, Lee Van Cleef, Lucille Ball, Betty Davis, the Ayatollah Khomeini, John Cavetes, Salvador Dali, and uh, they executed that psychopath Ted Bundy. Speaking of psychopaths, uh, we're going to start it off with raddest horror movie for 1989 voted on by our panel the finalists are shocker directed by wes craven that's the guy who created uh, nightmare on elm street shocker is about a tv repairman it turns into a spirit that can possess the living pet cemetery directed by mary lambert that of course written by stephen king master of horror has been all over this list pretty much every single year sometimes three in one year. Stephen King, uh, definitely one of the most important authors, especially for 80s cinema. My Lord, even 90. Also, we have Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, and that one is The Dream Child. Stephen Hopkins directed that one. Robert Englund, again, Freddy Krueger. This is one where Freddy returns to haunt the dreams of a pregnant woman or unborn, unborn child, and the winner goes to Pet Cemetery, directed by Mary Lambert. Even better book, really. I think that's my wife's favorite of the Stephen Kings, and she's read quite a few of them. And runner-up for 1989's Raddest Horror Movie goes to Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Raddest Comedy, 1989. Nominees are, this is a very strong year for comedies. First off, directed by Jay Levy, starring Weird Al Yankovic, UHF. And I've done a series on Weird Al Yankovic on his channel. Love Weird Al Yankovic. Love UHF. Definitely going to be on my most watched list. UHF, Wheel of Fish. You're so stupid. Open. Today, we're going to teach poodles how to fly. We don't need no stinking badgers. Love Weird Al Yankovic. Huge fan of this movie and everything Weird Al Yankovic has ever done. And he's an honorary Canadian. Anything Weird Al Yankovic touches is rad. Next up, Raddest Comedy 1989. Finalist, The Burbs. Directed by Joe Dante. This one stars Tom Hanks, Bruce Stern, Corey Feldman. It all takes place on one street, one little neighborhood in the suburbs. The Clopex moved to the block. Nobody tries trust them. Classic plot. Next up, directed by David S. Ward. The movie is Major League from 1989. It's actually over my shoulder right here. This is my copy. I got a sealed copy still. Tom Berenger, Wild Thing, Sheen, Joe Boo. Just a legendary 80s comedy. It's definitely one that got rented a lot by me or my friends, sleepovers as kids. Major League. Up next, directed by Stephen Herrick, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, starring Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves. This is where Bill S. Preston, Esquire, and Ted Theodore Logan travel through time after, uh, what's his name? Um, legendary comedian. God, his name ponytail this movie taught me more about history than than almost any movie i watched growing up as a kid beethoven genghis khan joan of arc napoleon socrates socrates 
Beethoven, the Wild Stallions, taking Napoleon to the water park and for ice cream. What number am I thinking of? 69, dude. God gave rock and roll to you. And what's his goddamn name? The comedian. And George Carlin to boot. Also come up in a lot of Kevin Smith movies down the road here. Legendary comedian George Carlin. Up next for finalists for Raddest Comedy of 1989 goes to one of my granny's favorites, Weekend at Bernie's, When Harry Met Sally. This one's directed by Rob Reiner again. So he's back. Meg Ryan with Billy Crystal. About as big a romantic comedy as there's ever been. When Harry Met Sally. Also from 1989. Directed by John Hughes. Starring John Candy. And uh, little Macaulay Culkin as well. Uncle Buck. Pay a rat to chew that thing off your face. This time we get uh, Tone Loke. Wow, thank you. You get Uncle Buck's car, you get the monster pancakes on uh, Macaulay Culkin's birthday, legendary John Hughes in his amazing run of directing. He was close to John Candy and he went strong until John Candy tragically passed away. It took the wind out of John Hughes's sails when John Candy passed away. Up next, directed by Jeremiah Chechik, written by John Hughes. Uh, he originally wrote the story for Vic in National Lampoon's magazine. That's where he got his start. Starring Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, and Christmas Vacation. Arguably, probably my most watched movie of all time would be Christmas Vacation. Clark W. Griswold Jr. breaking the land speed record on his sled. Raddest comedy of 1989 goes to... Goes to the Burbs. Raddest comedy of 1989. Directed by Joe Dante. Second place tied. Uncle Buck tied with Christmas Vacation. So two shows written by John Hughes. One directed by John Hughes. Christmas Vacation was originally supposed to be directed by Chris Columbus. Chris Columbus butted heads with Chevy Chase. He's kind of famous for that. John Hughes said, don't worry about it. I got another Christmas movie for you. It's Home Alone. Hope, hope it works out for you. It worked out pretty well for Chris Columbus and John Hughes. Third place for Raddest Comedy of 1989 goes to Weekend at Bernie's. Going into action sci-fi, the finalists are Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. This one's directed by Steven Spielberg. In the last installment, you get Indiana's dad, played by Sean Connery and Harrison Ford playing his role as Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade. These movies are all perfect. Uh, Indiana Jones 1, 2, and 3, the original trilogy. When I was a kid, it was always, there's arguments about what the best trilogy was. Some people would throw aliens into that, but it was normally between Star Wars, Back to the Future, and Indiana Jones. Finalist for Raddus Action Sci-Fi Adventure goes to Roadhouse. Starring Patrick Swayze. There's actually a remake coming out this summer. We're looking forward to that one. Finalist for Action Sci-Fi Adventure. Starring Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton in Tim Burton's Batman. Check out the Tim Burton episode on this channel. Check out the Jack Nicholson episode on this channel as well. Where I do the top 10 films for both of them. Next up, Action Adventure uh, for 1989 kickboxer starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. I just remember those gloves or they where they put him into was it in a glue or a wax or something like that and then covered in broken glass and fight with broken glass on their on their wrist wraps. Kickboxer. Haven't seen that one since I was a little guy. Um, I remember the bad guy had like that bad uh, that bad ponytail going on. Next directed by Richard Donner. He's back again Lethal Weapon 2 with Mel Gibson. And with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, I think this is one where Joe Pesci comes into the story. Nobody better to add than Joe Pesci. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure for finalist for action adventure sci-fi, Raddest. 1989 also brings us Back to the Future Part 2. Back to the Future 2 uh, come up before on these lists as well. Nothing cooler than Back to the Future 2, especially... In 1989, we talked about this movie, you know, through my entire upbringing, just about what was going to come true, what wasn't from Back to the Future 2. We didn't get the flying cars. The Cubbies did win the World Series. Florida did have a baseball team. Mind-blowing movie. If you didn't own it, then you rented it all the time. Another one where just a wall at the video store was all Back to the Future 2, and they were all rented. I remember seeing it in the theater and I remember at the end of it, they had the preview for Back to the Future 3 and that was the first time I ever remember seeing that in a movie. And the raddest action adventure sci-fi movie of 1989 goes to 
Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, raddest action adventure sci-fi movie of 1989. Directed by Steven Spielberg. He's got all kinds of rad flicks through the 80s, so why not cap it off with this beauty? Such a great movie. So easy to watch. This one and Raiders are probably the easiest to watch. I definitely watched the middle one, Temple of Doom, the most as a kid. I love Short Round. Love Data from the Goonies. Runner up for raddest action adventure sci fi for 1989 goes to Tim Burton's Batman. And in third place goes to. Jean-Claude Van Damme's Kickboxer. Next for Radflix 1989, Family Movie Night. So this is where we pick out the family movie options or family movies that we had as a kid. The nominees are UHF. That's been brought up a few times. Weird Al Yankovic. Back to the Future Part 2. The Little Mermaid from Walt Disney. I don't think this one has been brought up so far. The Little Mermaid, uh, Disney 1989. One of my favorite Disney movies hands down i will do a disney list in the future the little mermaid ariel the little mermaid wants to be part of their world and some of my favorite tunes under the sea kiss the girl you've got to kiss the girl oh the wizard family movie night the wizard starring uh kevin from the wonder years about uh, the release of Mario Brothers 3, sorry, Super Mario Brothers 3, these kids that are video game Nintendo experts. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids starring Rick Moranis. I remember going to see this one in the theater as well. That giant Lego block. I remember all the special effects seemed so cool. Other finalists for Family Movie Night 1989 go to Uncle Buck. Once again, directed, written by John Hughes. Christmas Vacation. I mean, that's definitely one I watch with my family at least once or twice a year. Little Monsters, another one starring Fred Savage. Family movie, like it. When Harry Met Sally for Family Movie Night. There you go, Jess again. Interesting childhoods going on. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Mandatory around here since you learn so many historical figures. And the winner of Family Movie Night for 1989 goes to Disney's The Little Mermaid which had two first place picks, two second place picks, and uh, a third place pick out of a six person panel. That's pretty good. The only one that didn't vote for Little Mermaid at all was Joe Two. So way to go, Joe Two. Up next, Radflex, Raddest Drama of 1989. I know that's an oxymoron. So first we have Do the Right Thing. So you got Spike Lee's classic. I love uh, Fight the Power, obviously, from Do the Right Thing. John Turturro, Dead Poets Society. Uh, starring Robin Williams, Robin Williams and Ethan Hawke. It's about a passionate English teacher it teaches his students to seize the day, pursue their dreams. Robin Williams, come on, man. Rest in peace, Robin Williams, one of the greatest of all time. Man, that guy can pull at the heartstrings, similar to John Candy. Definitely missed around our house. Born on the 4th of July, finalist for Radis Drama, director Oliver Stone. Tom Cruise does an amazing job in this one as uh, an amputee uh, confined to a wheelchair when he comes back from Vietnam. Hard to watch, uh, pretty gripping, and uh, Oliver Stone definitely very politically minded, but this one ages really well, and I think it, Oliver Stone sometimes has some ideas that are pretty far out there, but they always make you think. And I really like his directing. I like his movies a lot. So Parenthood. Parenthood, uh, Ron Howard, Rick Moranis again, Steve Martin. So Black Rain's finalist from 1989 as well. Also Kevin Costner, Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Driving Miss Daisy gets a nod for raddest drama. I, I really like that movie. Actually, Dan Aykroyd was in that too. Morgan Freeman. A great, did a great job. Another vote for Kickboxer for Raddest Drama of 1989. Say Anything. There we go. John Cusack, 1989. That's one where he's uh, playing the stereo, getting his, trying to get his girlfriend back. The winner of Raddest Drama of 1989 goes to Dead Poet Society, starring Robin Williams and Ethan Hawke. Raddest Drama of 1989 on Radflix. Runner-up was Field of Dreams. Third place for Raddus Drama of 1989 went to Oliver Stone's Born on the 4th of July. Before we get into the Raddus movie of 1989, we're just going to go through our most watched for each member of the Normal People panel. For myself, uh, from least to most watched, I've got Uncle Buck. Second is Back to the Future Part 2 for most watched. 
And most watched for me for this year for 1989 by far is Christmas Vacation. Ian, Christmas Vacation, Back to the Future 2, and his most watched is uh, Tim Burton's Batman. Caro, Major League is second most watched, and most watched is Christmas Vacation, written by John Hughes, starring Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. Bob's third most watched movie is UHF. Check out my UHF episodes on this channel, or my Weird Al Yankovic episodes on this channel. Bob's second most is Kickboxer, and his most watched movie of 1989 is Tim Burton's Batman. Third for Jesse is The Little Mermaid. Second is Stay Anything from John Cusack, and his most watched movie, Batman from Tim Burton. Joe Two's third most watched is Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Second most watched is Christmas Vacation. His most watched movie of 1989, Major League. Love it. I knew that was coming. Most watched overall for our group of panel of normal people, Batman from Tim Burton, runner-up Christmas Vacation. On to the final category for raddest flick of 1989. The finalists are as follows. Christmas Vacation from John Hughes, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade from Steven Spielberg, The Little Mermaid from Disney, Back to the Future Part 2 from Robert Zemeckis, Driving Miss Daisy, uh, which won Best Picture as well. Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner. Born on the 4th of July, Tom Cruise. Batman from Tim Burton. Kickboxer gets a vote for Raddest Flick of 1989. UHF also gets a vote. Raddest Flick of 1989. Thank you, Bob. Say Anything and Dead Poet Society. Raddest movie of 1989 goes to Tim Burton's Batman with Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson. This is the raddest flick of 1989 as voted on by normal people on this panel. Way better than that other crap that won all the awards. The runner-ups is a two-way tie between Field of Dreams, very cool, and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade from Steven Spielberg. So there you have it. The 1980s wrapped up. That's 1989. We've gone all the way from 1980 to 1989 in a short period of time. I want to thank our panel of normal Canadians, all six of us. I'd also like to thank the musicians behind the scenes. Uh, thank you so much to Lauren Falls for the exit music on these episodes for Radflix. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Put your opinions in the description below. I'd love to talk to you on, the, there's a Discord created for the Joe, for Joe Opinionated. Look it up. Patreon as well. Check me out on all socials. I'm always posting every record that we're listening to around the house. The 90s coming up next. Also some deep dives into some musicians such as the Tragically Hip and Ween. I know you might have noticed the Ween Quebec on my shirt here. I'm a big time fan of Ween. Going to do a deep dive for those guys soon as well. I'm sorry. I'm a little low on facts and high, high on, opinions. on opinions. Respect to the raddest movie of 1989, Batman, directed by Tim Burton. We'll catch you on the next one. See you soon.